going to learn about the Roy G. Biv prism and our inspiration for that lesson is going to be this cute story called A Color of His Own by Leo Leone. We're going to draw and then paint or color in with markers and crayons um, a chameleon who walks under the Roy G. Biv prism and then guess what happens to him? So let's get started. To start this project, you will need a pencil, an eraser, a black colored pencil, or a black permanent marker, Sharpie marker, if you are allowed to use one. So take your paper and put it horizontally. And then um, we're gonna start by drawing an oval, okay? So we want to kind of break down the shape of the chameleon into some basic geometric shapes. So and that's what artists do is they look at something and they'll break it down into simpler shapes and then put uh, those shapes and lines together until they build um, what it is that they're trying to draw. So for us, we're gonna use a, create an oval. And I would suggest lightly sketching your um, oval because we're going to be erasing and adding other shapes to the oval to, for the tail and for uh, the top of the head. So we are going to be adding to our shape. So I wouldn't draw really, I wouldn't press too hard. So it's easy to erase, okay? And the oval doesn't even have to be perfect because we're going to be bringing this up for the tail and we're going to be adding to the head. So just about the size of your hand, that which should be the length of your oval. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a curved line coming up from the bottom left side. And we're gonna bring it out to the left. So we're now we're not drawing a shape just yet. We're drawing just a curved line that kind of spirals around. And I would stop it just about here. So you only have one line right now. And the next step is we need to either go back around this way, if that's easier for you. Okay, so you can go back around and connect it to here, or you could have started here and come around so that now you have two curved lines that meet over here. And if you want to even extend this a little bit. Okay, so then we need to erase this portion of the oval because that becomes the back of the body where the tail attaches. Okay, so now it looks a little bit like a tadpole and I want to erase and get rid of all my eraser shavings, get them off the paper. Okay, and the next thing I want to do is I wanna to start to draw the top of the head here, okay? So I'm just going to add to this part of this side of the oval, just a curved line like so. And it's short, it's not a long line. And I'm gonna bring it another line from the top of it down to what would be the mouth area. Okay. And again, the old part of that oval line, the old line from the oval, I don't need that anymore. So I'm just going to clean up my drawing, get rid of my eraser shavings. I want to bring his mouth down a little bit. So it's not so round looking. And then I can draw his little line for his his mouth and makes this little smirk. And the next thing I would do is figure out where I want to put my eye. Okay, so it's not over here. It's somewhere back here. And I'm going to just sketch out a circle or you could trace something if you need something maybe the size of a dime. And then you're going to put a half of circle inside of that circle. And that's going to be his black pupil in his eye. So at this point, you should have the body, the tail, the eye, and a line for the mouth sketched in. And then we're gonna draw the legs. And to draw the legs, you're going to use two lines, one, two, 
that represent either side of the leg, and then we're going to attach four toes by using four curved lines. So we're going to start the first leg just about here, the first side of the first leg, and then I'm going to draw the other line before I put the toes in. So I want two lines for each leg. So let's start with one leg. So I have two lines for this leg and then one, two, three, four toes. Okay. And then I'm going to draw another leg. I leave a space in between. So two lines for this leg and then I'm going to draw one, two, three, four toes. Then I'm going to space it out a little bit more and I'm going to do the back legs and I need two lines to represent my leg and then I'm going to draw one, two, three, four toes. And then again, I'm going to draw two lines and then I'm going to draw one, two, three, four toes, just like so. Okay. Now, before I add any color or start to paint a rainbow in the background, I really need to get a dark black outline on my chameleon. So I'd like to use a black colored pencil or a black permanent Sharpie marker. stands for red, O stands for orange, yellow, Y stands for yellow, G stands for green, B stands for blue, I stands for indigo, and B stands for violet. So if you want to write down the Roy G. Biv name of the prism, um, and you can keep it close at hand so that you can um, pay close attention to the order of the rainbow, because when you paint in your project, you're going to want to paint or draw or color with the, the correct order of your Roy G. Biv prism. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna paint tonight. I'm in the mood to paint. So I'm gonna start with the first color and that is, what was it again? Red. So I'm going to actually paint a rainbow above my chameleon. And I'm just gonna use a swooping curve just like so. And maybe I'll give it another red stripe to make my stripe a little thicker. Notice I'm painting really slow and careful. So I'm painting my red stripe, my red rainbow stripe. I'm going to stop it just about here. I can always extend it, but I just want to leave it here for now. I don't want to bring it all the way down to the bottom of the paper just yet. I'm going to rinse my brush. And then the next color is orange for the letter O. I'm going to dip my brush into the orange and I'm going to paint my orange stripe. And when I run out of paint, I'm going to dip back into my paint set. And when I use water, make sure you have water in the paint set. You have to wet the paint set first so that the colors are ready for you to paint in and then the paint will move nice and smoothly over your paper. For watercolor paints you use water to move the paint and I because these colors are harmonious I can actually let them touch and they're not going to turn into like a yucky color if they touch yellow I mean um, orange and red. And I'm going to rinse my brush and the next color I'm going to you paint in is my yellow so it's red, or orange, yellow, 
and I'm not too worried if my yellow mixes into my orange either. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And I'm just gonna keep painting my rainbow until I have all of my colors finished. painted the chameleon but if you notice a lot of my colors started to blend together and bleed together when I was painting so I think for this one I'm going to color in my chameleon with my crayons so that the colors don't all mush and gush together uh, because you have to be very careful if you put all your warm colors and you let them mix with your cool colors warm colors are the red orange and yellows and the cool colors are the blues the purples and the greens if you let them all mix together they can turn brown and uh and grayish so um i think to avoid that it might be a good idea you could be brave and paint your chameleon in but for this one i think i'm going to use my crayons or you could use markers and i'm just going to draw rainbow stripes all over my chameleon so I have set up my crayons in the order red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. I put two greens, a light green and a dark green. So if you want to do that, you could do that too. And I also am going to keep this handy so that I can pay attention. And now I'm going to draw my stripes and you can make zigzag stripes or wavy stripes or bumpy stripes. Just keep following um, the order of the prism. And I think I might do rainbows all over my chameleon. So that's totally up to you. Um, so have fun and fill in your chameleon and you can watch what I do with mine. Thank you. 